welcome to the ca classroom today we will be discussing the concept of investment accounting what is this now investment uh, any company makes an investment in shares or debentures of other companies now how do i classify this investment if you look at your schedule 3 balance sheet you have non current assets and current assets if you remember the format very clearly we had one item called current investment and another, another item called non current investment or also known as your long term investment and short term investment now first let us understand what these terms are current investment and non current investment or long term investment you will be able to guess from the word itself current investment is a short term investment now how do i decide if my investment is short term or long term it is based on the duration now i cannot predict the exact duration how long i will hold this investment but you will have an intention a thought when you buy this the minute you buy this investment the intention decides accounting if your intention to hold it is less than 12 months then it becomes a current investment if the intention to hold your investment is for more than 12 months then it becomes a long term investment sometimes you might have an intention to hold an investment for 5 years but you might sell it within 6 months that is different because circumstances change in the future but at the time of purchase what was your intention you have to classify your investment accordingly let's say x limited is buying some shares of y limited with the intention of holding it for 15 months then it becomes a long term investment now at what value will i record this entry will be investment account debit to bank now the standard as 13 says current investments will be recorded in your books at cost and long term investments will also be recorded in your books at cost now how do we compute this cost what to include what to exclude we will see in the next section but now understand both the investments initially will be recorded at cost however assume investment goes through a balance sheet period let's say investment is made on 1st jan of a year now my intention to hold this is 9 months so after 3 months there comes a balance sheet date at the balance sheet date you will check the value of these investments now long term investments intention is to hold for a long period so temporary fluctuations in the price should not affect me much however current investment any temporary fluctuation should affect me therefore at the time of balance sheet date on 31st march you will revalue these investments at the lower of cost or realizable value realizable value let's say when you purchase the cost of the investment was 100 and when you are doing your revaluation on the balance sheet date the realizable value turns out to be 130 that is if i sell it today the fair value how much i will recover is 130 should i make any adjustment no you will not record any gains however if the value drops to 90 then the difference 10 rupees loss will be accounted by debiting your profit and loss account and crediting your investment this is concept of marking to market reducing my value of investment subsequently if this value again goes back to 100 then the 10 rupees gain will again be debited to your investment account and credited to your profit and loss account gain only to the extent of loss 
earlier recorded can be accounted now. Gain over and above the cost price, we will not account it now because anyway investment will be sold within 12 months. At that time, if there is any gain, we can account it. So, prudence concept account only for losses. Now, coming to long term investments. The concept here is, I am going to hold this for a long term, 5 years, 10 years, depends upon the intention of the company. So, any small fluctuations in the market price of the share or investment, we will not account it now. So, any temporary decline, any temporary decline in the value of investments will not be accounted. Only if the decline in the value of investments is other than temporary. The words used is other than temporary. If you feel it is a permanent nature in decline, let's say the company where you have invested, their credit rating has been decreased. So you might feel it is an other than temporary decline. Then only such permanent decline, decline in the value of investments, we will account for it by debiting your profit and loss account and crediting the long term investment account. However, in the future, if, if such a decline gets reversed, then again, I can debit my investment account and credit your profit and loss account. So, this is the basics of what price do you record it at the time of initial recognition and what to do at the balance sheet date. Now let us proceed to understand few other concepts. Now let us quickly complete few small concepts in AS13 before we proceed to investment accounts. Whenever there is going to be disposal of an asset, what is the cost or what is the book value you currently have? Compare this versus the sale proceeds. Difference, profit or loss can be booked in your Profit and loss account. However, such difference is subject to your concepts of come interest and ex interest, which we will be seeing in the next section. Coming to reclassification, I can classify from current investments move to non current investments and non current investments to current investments. What happens when I move from current investments to non-current investments? I purchased an investment thinking I will hold it only for 12 months. Now I am suddenly deciding to make it a non-current investment and hold it for a long period. When I make a movement from current investment to non-current investment, transfer the values at lower of cost or fair value. Similarly, when I am moving from non-current investment to current investment, transfer from non-current to current at lower of cost or carrying amount. So this is briefly about the concepts in AS13. Now let us go into the areas where they test us in exams, the sum parts, investment accounts. In the previous section, we understood the basic concepts of AS13. Now let us understand in depth how to account for a purchase of an investment and a sale of an investment. Now, first, when you purchase an investment, what will be the cost price of the sale? It depends on how you are purchasing. If I am purchasing by paying cash or bank more, then your cost will be the entire amount paid plus you might pay some brokerage charges, any fees, add all this to your cost of investment and your investment entry will be investment account debit to cash or bank. This will be subject to changes but this is your basic entry for purchase of an investment. Let us say you purchase an investment by exchanging an asset, by exchanging an asset. So you gave an asset and received an investment. In that case, your cost will be fair value of asset or 
fair value of investment received fair value of investment received whichever is more clearly evident meaning between these two which is more logical which has a better fair value not higher you should not take which has a higher fair value which is a more appropriate fair value we will consider that meaning it has a lot of comparables and compute it correctly next the third case is where let's say x limited and y limited is there i am getting securities of x limited by giving securities of my own company so i am receiving shares of another company by giving shares of my own company so how do i value this they say value them at the fair value of securities issued value them at the fair value of securities issued so my company securities i have issued what is the fair value now this is the concept of cost what is the cost of my investment now let us see what are the different types of investments and how to account for them in the previous section we had seen what is the cost of an investment and what entry to pass now let us understand that investment can be of two types one where i get returns every year my returns are guaranteed known as fixed income securities what are these debentures government bonds etc but when i make an investment i get returns every year accounting for this is different and other one is where my returns are variable returns are variable meaning returns depend on company announcing the returns example investment in shares i cannot guarantee dividend income every year only when the company where i have invested declares dividend i will receive a dividend we will open an account investment account a two column or investment account one column to record the cost and another column to record the interest remember it is a combination ledger so when the cost column debit means increase in cost credit means decrease in cost for interest credit is increase in interest and debit is decrease in interest you can prepare a double column ledger or you can prepare two separate ledgers one for investment account recording cost and one for recording the interest or income earned on my investments now let us see how to account and what is the concept of this come interest and excel let us take this example to understand the concept of come interest and excel interest let's say there is a company which is paying interest two times a year once on 30th september april 1st april is the beginning of the year and 31st march is the end of the year so they will also pay interest on 31st march and 30th september of every year now these debentures are purchased by multiple people in the open market so let us say on 1st of april mr x purchased 10000 debentures at rupees 100 and he has paid 1 lakh for this beginning of the year now he is expecting interest on 30th of september for a period of 6 months how much will be the interest let us say it is 10% 1 lakh into 10% into 6 by 12 will be 5000 will be the amount of interest for 6 months but what he has done after 5 months on 31st of august he has decided to sell this to mr y selling his debentures to mr y now how much will he sell these 10000 debentures for now look at this on 30th of september company will pay interest to x 
or why? Okay, next go and fight with the company saying, I had the debentures for 5 months, why have debentures only for 1 month? So pay me the interest for 5 months, pay interest to why for 1 month, not possible. Company will pay entire interest to why because he is the debenture holder on 30th of September. But why was the debenture holder only for one month? But he is getting interest for six months. He is also being benefited. Who is at loss? X is losing out interest for five months. So what he will do? When he is selling these debentures to Y, he will also add some premium amount. So let's say 10,000 into 100. 1 lakh worth of debentures. He is selling to Y for 1,20,000. So, what is the gain of X? Can I say 20,000 is my gain? 1,20,000 minus 1,20,000 1 will be your gain? Absolutely not. What you have to do is split this gain into how much amount is attributable towards interest and how much amount is attributable towards gain. Compute the 5 months interest, 1 lakh into 10 percentage into 5 by 12, 4167. So, 4167 is the amount of interest he should be getting for 5 months. Instead of getting it from the company, I am getting it from Y. So, out of 20,000, 4167 will be amount of interest and balance amount will be income for the person. So the entry will be bank account debit 1,20,000. He is selling his investments. So two investment 1 lakh, two interest income 4167 and balance will be your profit and loss. We'll go to your PNL as your gain on sale of investments. 15,833. So out of this, break your gain into what is interest and what is actual gain. Whenever somebody sells an investment, in the question if they mention come interest, it means he is selling his investment along with the interest gain. So you have to compute interest. Now why is buying this from X for how much? 1,20,000. What will be his cost? His cost is not 1,20,000. His cost will only be 1,20,000 minus 4,167 because he is paying 5 months interest to whom? To X. So, 1,20,000 for Y includes 4167 to the extent attributable towards interest. So, when he is purchasing an investment at come interest value, out of total cost of 1,20,000, you will not debit investment to bank 1,20,000. You will only debit investment to the extent of 1,20,000 minus interest Balance will be cost to buy and this will be your interest expense. He is basically paying interest to X. So this is the concept of come interest. X interest means what? The sale or purchase is excluding interest. So the entire amount can be, if the sale of 1,20,000 is given as X interest, then no need to split this. Entire 20,000 will be your gain on sale of investment. Interest has to be computed additionally. So this is the concept of come interest and X interest. In the previous section, we have understood the concept of come interest and X interest. Let us summarize this for ease of understanding. Come interest, whenever you purchase an investment, debit your investment account and credit your bank account to the extent of amount paid. However, entire debit will not go to investment. You are paying some money towards interest also. Therefore, debit your interest account also. 
So some amount will be debited to investment, some amount will be debited to interest. This is when I buy a share with come interest. What if I sell a security with come interest? I will debit my bank, bank account debit, credit investment to the extent of book value. Gains over and above book value are of two types. One is my interest income, amount I have received towards interest and the second is the gain on sale. So this will be your entry when you sell an investment on come interest basis and buy an investment on come interest basis. Let us move to X interest. When you buy an investment at X interest, you are not paying for the interest, you are only paying for the cost and the party will separately compensate you for interest. So entry will be investment account debit to bank for the entire amount I have paid towards X interest and interest will be separately compensated. When you sell a share of come interest, entry is similar entry, bank account debit to investment account XXX which is a book value and the balance gain difference over and above your book value will be gain on sale of investment. It, if it is loss, it will come on the debit side. If it is loss, it will come on the debit side. Now, for X interest alone, interest will be accounted or received or paid separately between the parties. So, this is about X interest and come interest. Now, let us move to see how to account for an investment with variable income. In the previous section, we are understood how to account for fixed income securities. Now let us see how to account for variable income securities. Let's say investment in shares. Now follow very carefully guys. This is the timeline. April, beginning of the year. March, let's say this end of the year. And company declares dividend sometime around. August. No. Dividend is declared in August for the profits earned by the company during the period April to March. Now follow very carefully. Let's say X is an investor right from the first day of the year, 1st of April. He had purchased shares of this company, let's say X Limited, on 1st of April. So entry he will pass is investment in shares account debit. Let's say he purchased shares for 100 to bank 100. He has not sold this investment. He has held it until this date of August and now he is receiving a dividend of rupees 10. What entry he will pass? Bank account debit to dividend income rupees 10 this will go to your profit and loss account but this is not what usually happens let us see what happens in different cases now let us say mr x held the investment through the entire period and sometime in may he sold it to y he sold it to Y. Now, let us say he sold it to Y for 110. Shares are sold to Y for 110. Now, Y is purchasing in May and in the month of August, he will receive a dividend. He will receive a dividend for the company for the period of profit during which he is not a shareholder. And he had not contributed capital during this period. So, even though he has not contributed for the profits earned during the year, he is receiving the dividend. Then, X who had held the shares for this long will not receive the dividend now because he is not the shareholder at the time of declaring the dividend. So, what X will do? 
X will want to recover a percentage of dividend. This dividend, what he is supposed to get from the company from Y. So, when he sells his shares to Y, the price of 110 will be inclusive of dividend. Will be inclusive of dividend. So, X in his books, when he is selling this investment, he will write bank account debit 110 to investment 100 and if the amount of dividend is known, this 10 rupees gain is not profit on sale but credited to your dividend income because instead of company paying him dividend, he is receiving it from the party who is Y. Now let us come to Y's books. Y, when Y is purchasing the shares, he will pass an entry, investment account debit, investment in shares account debit to bank 110. Now, if it's an interest problem, come interest and next interest, it is very simple to compute the amount of interest based on percentages because income is fixed. Here, amount of dividend is not known to Y. So, entire amount of purchase will be debited to the investment account. Later, what he will do? When the company declares a dividend, let us say, company has declared a dividend of 9 rupees. Now, what he will do? Normally, what is the entry you pass? Bank account debit to dividend income. But this 9 is not income for him. This is nothing but received against his cost of investment. So, the actual cost of investment is not 110. It has two components. One is cost. One is towards dividend which he has paid to X. Therefore, this amount of dividend will be reduced from your cost of investment and your investment will now become 110 9 minus 9, 101. So, Y in his books will show his investment at a price of 101. The logic here is, Y has paid money for an investment for a share which includes two components, cost of share and dividend because he became shareholder after end of the year and he does not, this in profit earned during this year does not belong to him. Now, what happens if somebody becomes an investor middle of the year, let's say in October after six months. Now, when he purchases share in middle of the year, the second half of the year, the dividend profits earned belongs to him and the first half does not belong to him. Then what will he do? He will pass the same entry when he purchases the share, investment account debit to bank account. But when you receive dividend, he will split it on time basis, let's say 6 months, then partially 50% for the period where he was not the shareholder will be credited to investment account and for the other part where he is the shareholder of the company will be credited to his dividend income account which will be transferred to his profit and loss account. So, this is about accounting for variable income securities. In the previous section, we had seen the concept of how to account for variable income securities. In summary, this is the concept. Let's say beginning of the year, end of the year and date on which dividend is declared. Let's say August. If you are a shareholder from the beginning of the year, accounting is very simple. If you are a shareholder after the end of the year, during this period if you have become the shareholder, then entire amount of dividend will be reduced from your cost of investment. If you become shareholder during the year, then what you have to do is, you have to apportion your dividend for the period before you became shareholder 
will go to redu reduction from cost and for the period that dividend is earned after you have become the shareholder for this period you will take it to your income account this is about accounting for variable securities now how to present an exam for fixed income securities we have two columns one is cost other was interest here we will have two columns one will be cost and other will be number of shares to have track of number of shares issued now whenever a company receives bonus shares then the entire amount of bonus shares will increase only on number of shares and cost will be zero now coming to rights issue now let us discuss what happens in case of a rights issue now let us understand rights issue an existing shareholder already investing in a company might receive a rights offer how will he account for this he has three options he can accept the offer decline the offer or renounce the offer when i accept the offer the entry will be investment in shares account debit to bank basically your investment value will go up to the amount of shares purchased again this depends when you are purchasing the rights there is a concept called record date now if you are a shareholder normal shareholder before the record date then you can account this but if you become a shareholder after the record date then you will not receive the rights offer itself so you will not be passing this entry if i decline the offer you will not pass any entry coming to renouncing rights assume i become a shareholder after the record date but i still wants to buy this right shares so i can buy this from a third party i can buy this from a third party or i can renounce my rights now when i renounce my rights and sell my rights share the normal entry will be bank account debit to income income statement let's say you are selling your rights for 15000 normally the entire amount will be credited to your income account but generally after a rights issue if you decline the offer or if you renounce the offer market price of share will fall and the value of your portfolio will decrease let's say your value of portfolio was 50000 before rights issue now theoretically price has dropped to 45000 so to the extent of such decrease in portfolio that 5000 you will credit to investment account and balance 10000 will be credited to your income account in that concept of what is rights issue why is the market price of share declining after rights issue how to account for this we had seen in rights issue chapter in depth link for that will be account given in the description of the video for you to understand rights issue in detail now the crux of this chapter investment accounts is very very simple whenever you purchase an investment what price you are paying will be the cost however because of time of purchase the entire amount cannot be cost you would have paid some amount towards interest or some amount towards dividend i have to adjust that and show the true value of my investments similarly when you sell investments you will not be selling and the entire difference will not be gain the difference fully will not be gain some amount will be towards interest or dividend income and some amount will be the actual gain we have to break it using time ratio based on when he is selling or when he is buying in that practically understanding this concept we will be solving a few sums in the live class thank you